Hello, everybody. My name is Mohammed Hijazi. I'm the JCI Vice President assigned to Africa and the Middle East. And I'm very excited to be here with you today for this exciting panel entitled Active Citizenship as a Lifestyle, hosted by two of my assigned organizations, JCI Nigeria and JCI Mauritius. Today, for the first time, we have gathered all five current and past JCI World Presidents from Africa and the Middle East under one virtual roof to learn from their journey as active citizens. I would like to welcome everyone joining us now on Facebook Live, and I would like to ask you to share any questions you have to any of our distinguished guests in the comments, and we will try to address them during our session. I would also ask you to share the Facebook feed with your friends and local organizations so we can reach the biggest number of active citizens. I would also like uh, to ask you uh, to ask to thank the uh, organizing team from JCI Nigeria and JCI Mauritius for the tremendous effort in organizing this event and for asking me to be the moderator of this historic panel. And now I would like to welcome JCI Nigeria President Oninia Chuku um, Baladogo for her opening remarks. President Oni, are you ready? Okay, meanwhile, as President Oni is ready, uh, I would like to ask uh, uh, President Franchette Emilien from JCI Mauritius to uh, start with her opening remarks. Thank you, Vice President Mohamed, President Itai, President Arnaud, President Roland, President Pascal, EVP Asha, National President Oni, all protocols observed, Good morning, good afternoon, or even good evening, depending from where you are. Wow, I can say that I feel so blessed to be part of this event today. It is the first time that many of us, of course, including me, are assisting an event uniting the five GCI presidents coming from Africa and the Middle East. I'm very excited today but preparing the, the event was also very exciting. Their accessibility, their kindness, their words of wisdom made the experience just awesome. Thank you, presidents, for making this one of a kind of a journey. Peeps, just liaising with these guys, hearing their advice was so inspiring. So you can imagine what will happen throughout this session. The inspiration level will be at its top, I'm sure. When they declared the COVID-19 as a pandemic and we went into lockdown, I thought that the year was spoiled as we would not be able to execute our plans. Yes, I like planning things and I'm not very happy when same is disturbed. But I think these past months have taught me to be more open-minded and to adapt to actual situations. Today's event was not in my plans. Actually, we started the discussion only two weeks ago, and here we are today with these five wonderful gentlemen, greedy to learn from them. From now on, if my plans are to be disturbed to bring such results, maybe be, may it be disturbed so often. I would like to thank the presidents for responding positively to this event and to give the members and non-members the opportunity to learn from your rich experience. I would also like to thank President Oni, my dear sister, and her very efficient and effective team for this wonderful collaboration. Let me just highlight that this is just the beginning and that you should stay tuned for more. Thank you everyone for being with us, be it on Zoom, on Facebook, I hope you have your fresh drinks around and some nice snacks by your side, because I believe it's gonna be a great movie and we will all be part of it. Thank you so much for your attention. 
Thank you very much, President Franchet. Um, as I see JCI Nigeria President is still having technical difficulties, I will uh, move forward to my opening remarks. First, I would like to um, give a quick overview of what is JCI, as we might have a lot of non-members joining us today. JCI or Junior Chamber International is a non-religious, non-political international volunteer membership-based organization present in more than 120 countries with, with more than 150 members. Our mission is to provide development opportunities that empower young people to create positive change. If you are not a member and would like to learn more about our organization, please reach out to the JCI organization in your country or city, and you can visit jci.cc for more information. Today's topic is active citizenship as a lifestyle. Active citizenship means people getting involved in their local communities and democracy at all levels, from towns to cities to nationwide to even worldwide activity. Active citizenship can be as small as a campaign to clean up your street or as big as educating young people about democratic values, skills, and participation. Active citizenship is taking matters in, into your own hands to improve the issues our society is facing and not waiting for others to bring the change that we want. Inaction is not an option. We must take action and responsibility if we want to have meaningful impact on our future and the world. Today, we have the pleasure to host five active citizens from Tunisia, Mauritius, Cameroon, Nigeria, and Zimbabwe, who have showcased their active citizenship on a global level and served our organization at the highest level. In line with our mission to provide development opportunities, JCI Nigeria and JCI Mauritius have selected some of their outstanding members to introduce each president. After the introduction, each president will have three minutes for their opening remarks, where they will tell us about their journey from the day they joined JCI until the, they became world president. What are the moments that stood out to them the most? And how was their experience as world president? Seeing as, as President Monsef is still having technical difficulties, I would like to ask um, Sanmi Abidun from JCI Ibidan Elite, JCI Nigeria, to introduce President Arnaud Goudiri. Thank you very much for the privilege to make this introduction. I'll proceed immediately to take the citation for JCI President President Anna Goudier. Anna Goudier, OSK, was the JCI president in 1994. He holds the national award of the officer of the star and key of the Indian presented to him by the president of Mauritius in 1994. Aside serving as JCI president, Anna Goudier also sat on the JCI board in 1990, 1992, and 1995. He's also a qualified JCI trainer. He started his professional career with the Mauritius oil refinery in the 90s before working with the Embassy of the Republic of Korea and working in several capacities with Shell International over the space of 22 years, 1987 to 2009. He's currently the company director for AG Consulting, having recently served as company director for Lachlan about LTE from 2015 to 2019. He's an affiliate member of the Mauritius Institute of Directors, MIOD, with many years of experience on the board of several establishments, including the Export Processing Zones Development Authority, Mauritius Post and Cooperative Bank Limited, Global Migration Solutions, Mauritius Consultancy and Management Services Limited, and Mauritius Post Limited. He's fluent in English and French, and he enjoys playing golf, water sports, trekking, reading, scene movies, and gardening. Fellow JCs, ladies and gentlemen, I present to you, and please welcome with me, Anna Godier, OSK JCI Senator. It's a pleasure having you. Thank you very much for, for this introduction. Vice President Mohammed, all my good friends, past president, and above all, the 2020 JCI President Itai, EVP, Asha, all distinguished guests, fellow JCs listening, national presidents here who have 
wonderfully organized this uh, session, this Zoom session. It's uh, really a great privilege to be here. And if there was not this pandemic, we would not have gathered here wholeheartedly together and share some good moments. I'm sure we would have waited for an events conference or World Congress to meet, but this has taught us a very good lesson that we can meet virtually. And uh, for me, uh, from this introduction uh, that you made, uh, yes, I had the chance of uh, becoming the 49th JCI World President in a year where we celebrated the 50th anniversary of JCI, 1944 to 1994. So 50 years, there was a motto that is still popular, go for goal, which was the motto of the year, and strive for excellence. And uh, I was called the cutting cake president because in some over 70 countries that I travel, every time JCs, national presidents, the board and everybody organize a banquet and we cut a 50th anniversary cake. But that year was very special because since it was the 50th anniversary, it invited us to go back to the roots of the organization, to understand why we are here, why we are JC's active citizens, what our founders, their legacies, they have given to us. So I think in life, it's very important for any human being organization to know where we come from and take lessons about all that. That was the first thing that JCs did that year, back to basics. Secondly, we had four areas of opportunities, as you know, community, individual development, management, international. We introduced a fifth one, which was business. So that year we had five area conferences and it was a business conference in Bali called the Bali Business Conference, where was launched the International Business Associate, IBA, that connected worldwide all business people because most of the JCs, they are entrepreneur, they run business, they are professional, etc. So there is a connectivity among us in terms of being professional and entrepreneur. So we have this business network where you had a sort of code which help you to identify and to share and to uh, therefore distribute in as an IBN with a number on it. The third one was environment. So that year was Mutanai. Mutanai was a Japanese concept, was the buzzword of JCI in that year. And it's an endorsed program by Japan JCs. So basically, it helped to save the multitude of natural resources that there are in the world. So JCs around the world conducted programs that was, of course, rewarded, recognized, etc., which portrays how they are saving energy, they are preserving the natural resources, and that was quite popular. So as a, also a, a, a JCI president, I had the opportunities of traveling around the world as my other colleagues here and uh, meeting uh, head of states, government. So in Africa, I remember meeting Mr. Henri Conan-Bédié, the president of uh, Ivory Coast, Blaise Compaoré, a very high profile political figure since now today. Uh, one who fascinated me was Archbishop Tutu, that's one Tutu, and uh, I think uh, this something was very special meeting such a, a distinguished guy. And uh, the year culminated, of course, to conclude by the JCR World Congress, where we celebrated the 50th anniversary in COVID, 
attended by, I remember, 15,000 delegates coming from over 100 countries and uh, was officially opened by the Crown Prince of uh, Japan. So last thing is to come back to the topic of uh, this today. I think it's a very sexy uh, topic because we are talking about active citizen as a lifestyle. I like this lifestyle. And uh, if you look at any JCs, uh, you can see uh, there's a sort of lifestyle. Eh? I'm not going into details about it, we all know. And uh, what we call a way that we live. But I believe uh, some are role models. Eh? can see that some in their life, others, uh, we need more and more, ro more role models in their life. But I think uh, this question of active citizen, and uh, which has been described by the uh, introducer, is uh, we need to know the lifestyle we choose and not the lifestyle that chooses us. There's a difference. And we, JCs, the decision that we need to take is to decide what is the lifestyle that we choose and don't let others impose on us the lifestyle because we tend to uh, sort of uh, complain about government not doing this, not doing that. But being an active citizen is to start probably from our home, from our office and uh, our communities, etc., how we want tomorrow to be. And we need sort of to get out of our couch, empower our JCs uh, all worldwide, and uh, make changes we want to see in the world. And uh, in our area, Africa, which is a booming area, a promising area, different from others, uh, there we can from our own uh, little, uh, let's say, community chapter organization make the difference? Uh, there is from this famous app locally uh, and uh, have the result globally. Yeah? Uh, we need to start to, to do that. And uh, then uh, we will change uh, the world gradually. And I think this is a question of mindset and in our mind. So if we stand as an active citizen, willing to change the world, willing to have positive change. So this is the sort of attitude that we need to bring. And with the right attitude will come the altitude that we want to reach. So this is what I believe would be this uh, chair, Mohamed. Thank you very much, President Dodieri, for your opening remarks. And at this point, I would uh, like to recognize the presence of uh, JCI Secretary General Kevin Hinn, who is with us today, and, and as well, the presence of the um, JCI African Middle East Executive Vice President Asha Oklu as well. If uh, there are any other officers who are present on the Facebook feed, please make yourself visible so that we can recognize you. Uh, as I see President uh, of JCI Nigeria, uh, Onyenyei is here. Uh, please, uh, I would like to welcome you to do your opening remarks. All right, thank you so much, VP Mo. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. It, I am so excited to welcome you all to this forum on active citizenship as a lifestyle. This is the second series in the training collaboration between JCI Nigeria and JCI Mauritius aimed at promoting entrepreneurship and active citizenship. Now the COVID-19 pandemic came as a surprise to us, but we are adapting to the new normal. And beyond taking the necessary precautionary measures, this has been a time of reflection and coming up with innovative ways to continue making sustainable impact as an organization and in our individual lives. It has been a time for personal development, importantly, it has shown that active citizenship is needed now more than ever. Now, this is a time for young persons to 
take responsibility with respect to the things happening around them and to take innovative steps of providing needed lasting solutions. It's a time to lead from wherever you are with or without the benefit of a title. Now the team for JCN Nigeria for 2020 is impact through diversity. And this is born out of the need to have everyone work together towards creating sustainable impact, irrespective of our educational background, our political affiliations, gender, talents, ethnicity, religion, and every other thing that ordinarily showcases our differences, embracing our rich diversity as our strength. Now, active citizenship is more than a concept. It is a movement, it is a lifestyle. It is about seeing a need and taking the lead. It is about having a mindset change and recognizing that everything happening around us ultimately affects us one way or the other and so concerns us. Now, the pandemic is a very good example of this. Now, as such, we all have a role to play and adopting active citizenship as a lifestyle made up of our past JCI presidents and the 2020 JCI presidents who have had the experience of leading an organization of young active citizens in more than 100 countries around the world. And they would be sharing this experience with us. So once more, welcome to this life-changing and inspiring forum. And please take the time to learn, unlearn, and relearn from these great minds. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, President Oni. Uh, and uh, I would also like to welcome now uh, President Monsef Baruni. And I would like to call upon Diksha Bihari from JCI Bubais and Rose Hill, JCI Mauritius, to introduce President Monsef. Yes, thank you. Uh, all protocol observed. Greetings, everyone. So, thank you for this privilege. He owns a master's degree in law from the Faculty of Law and Economic Sciences of Tunis with 44 years of professional experience and is affiliated to several professional associations. He is an active member of the Junior Chamber International Tunisia and was national president in 1980 before becoming JCI president in 1986. He, also, he is also the founding president of the Tunisian American Chamber of Commerce from 1986 to 2007, resident of the Association of Tunisian American Friendship from 1989 to 2013, and member of the Arbitration and Conciliation Center of Tunis. With a rich professional career, he is a lawyer at the Tunis Bar since 1971, to date, one of the best I heard. He speaks fluently Arabic, English, and French, and has been serving this organization that is so dear to him for years now. This brilliant gentleman is no other than our 1986 JCI president, Mohamed Amonsef Baruni, all the way from Tunisia. Welcome. Thank you. President Monsef, your microphone is muted. Uh, good afternoon for everybody. Uh, greetings from uh, Tunisia. Uh, I'm glad to announce that Tunisia now is uh, overcoming the COVID situation and, and problems. We are now the safest, among the safest countries in, in the world. Uh, as far as my uh, link with the JCI organization, it goes back to a long time. I'm glad to meet with uh, old friends uh, whom I consider as, you know, uh, uh, young people comparing to me. Arno, uh, I, um, I was listening to Arno speaking. And uh, I, I remember uh, when I was a uh, JCI president, I went to Mauritius. I, I attended the, uh, the, the foundation 
of the JCI Mauritius. And uh, Arnaud was then, uh, you know, uh, I think uh, among the young members of this fine organization in Mauritius. Uh, Marde, uh, who was the founding president of Mauritius uh, JCI, I, I think uh, this uh, reminds me very important and nice and lovely moments of my career with the JCI organization. So uh, I joined this organization in 1977. I think if not all of you, but most of you were not there. Uh, so, uh, uh, and from the beginning, I uh, found out that I am in an organization where I can find a good chance to grow, which I didn't find in other organizations. This is a reality. And I started dreaming to be JCI president from the first day of my joining this organization at the local, at the local level. We used to say LOM, local organization member or organization. So uh, since 1977, uh, that was my dream. And I wanted to become a JCI a president and uh, that was not uh, like, you know, uh, something impossible. No, uh, this organization is showing to every ground member that it is an organization of opportunities. You join this organization and the first day you join this organization, doors and windows are opened before you. The only thing is you want or you don't want. And uh, uh, if, if, if you compare the JCI organization with others, you will not find the notion of opportunity. We used to call the areas of opportunity in our organization when it comes to describe its program and its activities, areas of opportunities. This is what JCI is all about. about. So uh, 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 the only thing is you have a dream, you believe in your dream, you get an ideal, and once you have the ideal, you start planning. And if you plan, you go through action. And if you go through action, you get result, and if you reach the result, you are happy. So the, this is a very natural link between dream and happiness. You don't dream, you will never be happy. So JCI is really the framework which gave me this lesson and gave me the opportunity to work according to the training that our organization is providing all its members. And uh, hopefully in Africa, we were like, uh, you know, um, made beside the uh, race uh, to, towards the uh, highest situation and highest responsibility in this worldwide organization. And that was, you know, uh, not fair. We had the opportunity to reach, you know, vice president or executive vice president, but uh, I never, before I joined this organization, heard about an African who can become a, an international president. And this was not, I'm not blaming the others, I'm blaming myself and ourselves. When I first announced that I would like to be one day the international president of this organization, which I love, one of the Morocco's 
senators, Jesuit senators, and all. he was minister then with uh, King Hassan II. And I talked to him and told him why Morocco or Tunisia will not, you know, uh, claim their right and have this honor to lead this international organization. And this minister said to me, Monsef, you are dreaming. We cannot. I said to myself, this is very good incentive. And I have to build upon his remarks to show him, to show him that his remarks are wrong. And hopefully in Africa, this uh, idea was uh, very well accepted, very well supported. And uh, one day when uh, we were about to reach this situation and this position within JCI organization, um, I had a, a talk with a great friend of mine, uh, past uh, JCI president Gary Nagao from Japan. And I told him, Gary, I'm very close to JCI presidency. He said, Monsef, this is your right. It is, uh, uh, it, is, it is really obvious that any individual member of this organization can reach this position. But Monsef, you have four handicaps. For, 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 for bad, you know, uh, things that will maybe uh, uh, prevent you from reaching such a position. I said, Gary, what's, what are they? He said, most of you are Arab. Most of you are Muslim. Most of you are African. Most of you are from the third world country. These four, you know, um, uh, qualifications. The, I'm I'm Arab. I am Muslim. I am African, and I am from the third world country. But these, you know, qualifications should not be the criteria for aiming and having the honor to uh, hold the JCI presidency uh, worldwide. But that was really the, uh, the climate, the impressions, the, uh, the custom, you may say whatever, but these were, you know, the impressions that uh, were made before us, African. We want to reach our objective, we want to enjoy our rights, but there was, like elsewhere, in other organizations in the world, this kind of, you know, position, which uh, is like, you know, uh, discrimination. This is real discrimination without any justification. And hopefully uh, that was, again, like the remarks from the Minister of Morocco, uh, the remarks from uh, Gary Nagao, were to me again, and to my friends, to my team, uh, to my good friends in Africa, an incentive to go forward and to, uh, you know, to challenge. This is a good challenge. And we believe that in JCI, we have the right to reach, you know, uh, such, such position and to enjoy our rights as members of an international organization according to the, you know, uh, GCI Creed. And finally, uh, we uh, got uh, support. Uh, everybody uh, uh, was convinced that, first of all, we uh, have the right to become GCI president from Africa or Arab or Muslim country. Then, then uh, we have the qualifications to uh, enjoy and to have such position. And I may say without any pretentious that we have more qualifications than people from, and young people from other, you know, organizations. And finally, 
the wisdom has led most of the national organizations to uh, accept and to support and to vote for the first time uh, a president of JCI from Africa. And I'm glad that uh, that was the first uh, step, but this, I'm glad also that uh, I'm now in presence of my good friends who uh, are, uh, you know, uh, very courageous, very talented, and they have decided to uh, run for such position because it's our right, it's our, our, our aim, and it's our challenge. So this is my, my experience in this organization. I'm glad, as I said, that uh, you uh, get us together. Thank you. Thank you very much for organizing this uh, meeting. And uh, I say hello to everybody. And uh, I may say a special, uh, special hello to my past JCI presidents from Africa. Thank you very much, President Monsif, for being with, uh, with us today. And we are very proud to have had you the first president from Africa, where you opened the door to the fellow presidents uh, with us today. Uh, at this point, I have received word that a President Scott Greenlee from JCI USA sends you, to your, uh, sends yeah. you his regards. Uh, to, to the presidents on this panel. And what I would also like to recognize all the senators and the national presidents who are watching us live on the Facebook feed. Thank you very much for joining us. Uh, at this point, I would like to ask the presidents to please limit their opening um, speech to three minutes so that we will have time to take uh, questions as we do have several questions lined up. Uh, I would like to ask upon uh, Olamipo Adewola from JCI Victoria Island, JCI Nigeria, to please present President Ronald Kuiman. It is with great honor that I profile the leader who trains future leaders, Roland Kuiman. He is the 2010 JCI president a man of great values and passion for Africa. Born on the 4th of April, 1971 in Yaoundé, Cameroon, Roland Kremen holds a master's degree in international management from IEA, IAE, Poitiers, France, and a diploma in corporate social responsibility from the World Bank Institute. He is the chairman of Go Ahead Africa Limited, a training and coaching firm whose objective is to contribute to the development of Africa by strengthening the capacities of its development actors. As part of its CSR policy, Go Ahead Africa Limited, in partnership with PLF, organizes and facilitates leadership and entrepreneurship academic, um, academies in many African countries. Program focused on training, empowerment, and providing opportunities to young leaders and entrepreneurs. He's an impactful leader who inspires, an excellent speaker, a trainer, and a coach who has the keys and the right words to awaken the power of transformational leadership the lies dominant in every individual, especially amongst young people. He facilitates coaching topics in various TV channels and social networks. He authors an autobiographical book titled The Impact of One and is the founder of Impact Talk Concept, a training slash talk designed for top and middle management desiring to boost their performances via soft skills. Roland Kramen has traveled to more than 90 countries. He speaks both English and French fluently. He lives in the beautiful city of Boye in Cameroon with his wife, Marjoline, and his three children, Patrice Williams, Diane, and Enzo B. Ladies and gentlemen, it is with great pleasure that I once again welcome the leader who trains future leaders, Roland Kramen. Thank you. Okay, good, good. Can I go on, Mohamed? 
Yes, President Ronald, we're waiting okay. for you. Okay, thanks. Thanks so much. I want to thank uh, Adwala for this uh, inspiring introduction. Let me seize the opportunity again to really acknowledge and thank uh, our pioneer and father, Monsef. Uh, the last time I think we met was in Osaka, Japan. And I want to, to thank you. It's, it's, re it's really unfortunate that we have not been meeting physically. Thanks to JCI Nigeria and JCI Mauritius, uh, we, can, we can meet on uh, this platform. And I really hope that as soon as the travel and the borders are open, we will quick uh, reconnect. So I, I want to all protocol uh, respected, go straight to the point. So uh, after the presentation of President Baudet and President Mosef, that was quite uh, inspiring. I've prepared some slides for you guys. Uh, I will take really a few minutes, three minutes, uh, which is more, uh, okay, good. Uh, active citizenship as a, as a lifestyle. So what, what we did, the first inspiration is from Kofi Annan that uh, you all know, a, a strong advocate of our organization and a past member. No one is born a good citizen. He says that, and which is true. Even the nations are not like, but rather it is important for us to continue to involve uh, all these uh, stakeholders. I, and he says young people must be included from birth. And a society that is cut off from youth is totally going to have challenges in, in terms of. So if you look very well, this is the foundation of our organization. You know, citizenship is a strong foundation. Now, we all know, especially the, the current member from 2010, we spoke a lot about the active citizenship framework. I don't want to talk about it. I, I want to talk to you about the golden cycles of the active citizenship uh, 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 concept. The one is what, the second why, and the last is how. Now, talking about the what, it is clearly to just say, active citizenship usually refers to the involvement and the participation of especially our target population, young people, in community involvement, in nation building. So it, it calls to human rights, freedom, but most importantly, democracy. When we listening to President Mosef, he said it, that before him, it was quite difficult to think that an African would become a world president. Whereas the fact that it was not about competency. No, it was more about some cliche. So it is important to say, it is one of the most important steps towards a healthy, society, especially for the new democracy. So the African Middle East. So we see that this concept can really help to build and to make that we have sustainable uh, societies. Now, the why is simple. If they ask you, why are you a JCI member? I mean, what, what I like, you know, it boils down to become true change agents. Where all oh, that is the final goal of our organization to to, to build these young people, all these the development opportunities that the organization offers to young people is to help them at the end to be true change agents. So and now that is the why of our organization. That is the why of active citizenship. Now, how do we do it? And I want to conclude on this. These are four important steps. Number one, we should take decision and keep in mind the long-term consequences of our present action. This organization is more than 100 years old. The founder started and had a vision with friends. It has gone through years. And from the data, so I think when I was JCI president, we are talking about more than 11 million young people that have, connected, that have passed through this organization. And it is important to know that what we are doing today is not for you only, but it's for future generations. Number two, we should understand how several factors interconnect and correlate in order to have a bigger picture. What today you call partnership and collaboration. We have identified three main players in modern society, government, corporate world, and the civil society. But if, if we want to succeed, so active citizenship is the, the collaboration, is the, is, is the link between these three main actors. Number three, we need to share personal commitment for tasks and deliverable and inspire others to take responsibility. And President Arno also said that. President Mosef said it, and I'm sure Pascal will say it. This organization is not just about empowering young people, but empower them to take responsibility. We should stop complaining 
we should stop blaming or we stop increasing. And last but not the least, number four, we need to look for and implement innovative solution to address current and future issues, which is great. COVID-19 is a clear indication that we need to reinvent ourselves. And active citizenship as a lifestyle is a mindset that help us to reinvent ourselves. So again, thanks so much. As I always say in my signature, we have the whole continent to build. Thank you so much. And that is my opening remarks. Thank you very much, President Roland, for your uh, very interesting presentation. To uh, remind our viewers on Facebook to leave in their questions in the comments if they have any questions to any of our presidents and to share the feed so that we can reach the biggest amount of active citizens. Now I would like to uh, call upon uh, Krishanta Shavirmutu from JCI City plus JCI Mauritius to please introduce President Pascal Dike. Krishanta, are you with us? Yes, thank you, Mr. Vice President. Greetings, everyone. It is an absolute honor to introduce the 2016 JCI President, Pascal Dike from Nigeria. His motto was just act, and this is exactly what he has been doing during his JCI career, which spans over 20 years. He has used his talents as trainer and speaker by traveling to 80 countries, impacting participants from over 110 nations. He has served the organization in different capacities, such as national president, vice president, JCI general legal counsel, and course leader for the JCI Academy. He is currently the CEO of two companies involved in consulting, communication, entrepreneurship, and leadership. He's a member of the Nigerian Institute of Training and Development and an affiliate of the International Federation of Training and Development Organizations. In addition to all of his actions, his legacy in JCI produced as the initiator of the Peace is Possible campaign. Today, the campaign is carried out in over 70 countries, which is not just a feat, but a necessity. Thank you for your presence, Mr. President. Well, thank you very much for the wonderful introduction. First, let me recognize and very sincerely appreciate President Franchet and um, President Onye for this initiative, and of course, all your teams. Well, let me thank President Monself, President Arnold, President Roland, and um, I want to say that um, I hope this is not um, a setup because um, myself and Itai are still very fresh from our GCI experience. I mean, Itai is still in it. But having the opportunity to share, I'll call it the virtual stage with um, these three wonderful leaders out of our area is a, a great honor that I don't take for granted. Now, given that, I want to say I hope we are all staying very safe and doing whatever is necessary to stay away from COVID-19. I tell people that COVID-19, yes, is a big challenge, but it also provides a wonderful opportunity. One of those opportunities is what we're seeing today. This opportunity we're having to interact. You know, um, some of us have not been very used to this virtual um, kind of events and activities, but we are struggling to learn it and we don't have a choice. But after now, believe me, it's going to be a new normal because a lot of people make money, make contacts, create networks out of this. So with that said, we are talking today about active citizenship as a lifestyle. Um, I would like to individualize it by asking who is an active citizen? And I ask you like a question. Do you care enough to want to make a change in your community? Do you care enough to change the lives of people around you? Do you care enough to roll your sleeves, get dirty, and do what we consider extraordinary, done by an ordinary person? That was the question. If your answer to this is yes, then you are on that journey of active citizenship. I'll share a little story with you. When I was a little boy in the village, my village, maybe about eight years old, there were a few persons who had vehicles, okay? And when it rains, you have pools of waters all over. So when people's vehicles get stuck in the pool of water, those of all the young people will just stand by 
not wanting to lend a hand until we are beckoned to come and then we are offered money. So we will never want to do anything until we are offered something as a reward or as an incentive or an, an enticement to want to do that. That was my understanding of what you have to do as a young person. But when I joined JCI in 1997 and got involved deeply, I came to understand that we live for others and not for ourselves. So when you become an active citizen, there are two very important words that must be prominent in everything you do. I call them responsibility and influence. So you do not wait to be asked to do something. So JCI made me understand and woke my consciousness to the fact that an active citizen is someone who understands that there are challenges around him or her, that there's something to be done in the community. He does not only think about it, but he galvanizes effort, he takes action. So thinking is not enough. Feeling is not enough. You must act. It is only when you have taken action and produced results that you can say you're an active citizen. And therefore the question is, how can we make this a lifestyle? I want to say to you that my involvement in JCI changed my orientation totally to understand that we live for others first before ourselves. And that is how an active citizen thinks. That's how an active citizen should behave. And therefore, when you are an active citizen, you don't do things for yourself. You do it for others. And when you do it for others and the results are good, then definitely you will benefit from it. For example, if you do something to better your community, you are a member of that community, right? So if the community gets better, you get better. If it gets worse or bad, you get worse or bad. So most importantly, we, we must take away from this is an active citizen is that someone who does not sit down and watch. In fact, I say to people everywhere that you lose your right to complain the moment you cannot identify what you have contributed. I repeat that. You lose your right to complain, whether about your government, about businesses, about roads, about electricity, about corruption. You lose your right to complain about anything if you cannot point a finger to what your contribution has been. And that's why an anonymous author said something. He said, no man, no woman has any right to come into this world, live through it, enjoy the beauty, and then exit without justifying the reason to have come in the first place. So an active citizen should waken us to that fact that if we live without 20 years or 30 years or 50 or even 100 or more and die, and people cannot point our legacies, the things we did to impact others, to impact our communities, it was better, we were never born. So the question is, doesn't matter how old you are, can you take a look back to do what I call self-reflection and ask yourself, what has been your contribution to your family? What has been your contribution to your community? What has been your contribution to your country? And what has been your contribution to the global community? If you cannot place a finger on anything, then I'm gonna ask you to please re-examine your life. Then you are not an active citizen. So an active citizen is someone who understands that there are challenges and he thinks about them. And that's why I say to people that we must stop thinking too much because we think a lot and we must stop talking too much. We must begin to feel and that feeling should bring it to the point of wanting to act. That brings me to one word that I have used for the last six, seven years. I call it benevolence. Benevolence to most people, I'm sure to some of us here, means compassion, empathy, sympathy. But an author from Japan, Inezo Nitobe defines it as the feeling of distress. So an active citizen is someone who feels distressed, pained, uncomfortable with situations around when things are not going right. And that feeling is what engineers this active citizen to want to take action. Something as simple as you're walking on the road, a very clean place, and people are dropping trashes on the road. The question to ask yourself, should you just walk past and say, look, it's not my business. An active citizen should do something. Either you call the consciousness of that person to what he or she is doing that is wrong, or you take the step to clean up the place. And therefore, I say an active citizen is a clear distinction between what I call the civilian and the citizen. The civilian is someone who could be comfortable, have the beautiful cars, uh, wonderful houses, great education, have good titles and positions, but he does not do anything to affect positively his community. He does nothing to affect people around him. But an active citizen is someone who may not have the deep pocket, who may not have all the education, who may not have all the money, but every day, he or she thinks about what more can I do to make the lives of people around me better? What more can I do to bring about change? What more can I do to bring about impact? And that is what active citizenship represents. It represents someone who does not make too many excuses and indulge in excuses 
but takes action to want to bring about the change. And that's why Jeff Kennedy says, my final word, that the problems of humanity cannot possibly be solved by cynics and skeptics whose horizons are blocked by obvious reality. There are challenges in the world, but we cannot continue to talk about those challenges alone. He went on to say that we need men and women who can dream of things that never were and ask why not. And if you are an active citizen, your question should change from that of why to why not? Why not me? Why not us? Okay, so let's take away that attitude of it is their problem and assume an appropriate that mindset of it is our problem. And when you come to that consciousness and you understand what benevolence is, you're distressed enough, you do something about it. And that's the only way we can create the change that we need in our lives, in the lives of people and in the world. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much, President Pascal, for your inspirational introduction, as always. Um, at this point, I'd like to recognize uh, Area Director Tonji Oyeyemi from Nigeria, who has joined us. And I would like to ask um, Mariam Bamari from JCI Nigeria, Nasarawa State University, Cafe of JCI Nigeria, to kindly present our 2020 President, Itai Manieri. Okay, um, good day, everyone. I'm here to present on um, our 2020 president, Itai Manieri. JCI president Itai Manieri was elected and inaugurated as the 2020 JCI president during the 2019 World Congress in Thailand, Estonia, and currently serving as the 75th JCI president. Born 37 years ago in Gweri, Zimbabwe, JCI President Manieri is the founding director of Blue Technologies, Blue Dots Technologies, an, organize, an organization that delivers value to mobile network operators in, the South, in South Africa, Asia, and Europe. He joined JCI Harare, Zimbabwe in 2004. He served on the local board and as Harare local president in 2006. From 2000, <clears throat> From 2008, he served on the JCI Zimbabwe National Board in various capacities, eventually becoming the 2014 JCI Zimbabwe National President. At international level, JCI President Manieri served as 2015 JCI Vice President for Africa and Middle East, and was later appointed to, 20, to the 2016 JCI Skill Development Committee. 2017 JCI Growth and Development Committee, Africa and Middle East, and elected the 2018 JCI Executive Vice President for Africa and Middle East. JCI President Manieri served as the Chief Executive Assistant to the 2019 JCI President. As JCI President Manieri leads in 2020, his theme is bright the gap, bridge the gap. He firmly believes as young people we are responsible to share the future we want, and it's up to us to take advantage of the opportunities presented. We must turn around and fortune of present day society to deliver a tomorrow fit for future generations to enjoy. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you our president, JCI president, Itai Manieri. Thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, thank you very much, uh, Mariam, for, for that introduction. Uh, along the way, I got lost. I did not realize you were actually introducing me. But thank you very much for this. Thank you very much to JCI Nigeria and JCI Mauritius uh, for bridging the gap, the geographical gap uh, that we've always had in this organization by organizing this exciting series uh, and also inviting me to come and sit on this panel that uh, is an amazing panel that shows you sons of the continent that have risen to the highest level of this magnificent organization and served with distinction over the years. I see 1986 President, uh, President uh, um, Monsef, uh, 1986, I was only four years old. And uh, I'm, I'm, I'm very honored to have you here today, sir. And most importantly, to appreciate you for breaking that glass ceiling. That is the first thing, breaking that glass ceiling and showing that it is possible for young people from uh, the, the mother continent uh, 
to, to serve at the apex of the organization. And I'll take it as one that shows us that whatever you believe, whatever you dream of, whatever you conceive and you actively pursue, it will come to pass. And you made it possible and you showed that that is possible. Also to acknowledge uh, 1994 President, uh, 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 President uh, Arnold, Arnold uh, from Mauritius. Thank you very much, sir, for being on this panel. My older brother uh, and mentor over the years, 2010 JCI President, uh, Roland Cremain from, 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 from Cameroon, who keeps working every day to, to, turn out, to, to, to turn young people into leaders on the continent and beyond. And my big brother uh, and mentor who's, who's held my hand over time, 2016 uh, JCI President uh, Pascal, Pascal Dike. And what a topic for us today on active citizenship, where we say active citizenship, active citizenship needs to be a part of your lifestyle. It has to be a part of you. The way you walk, the way you talk, the way you carry yourself, the way you run your business, the way everything around you happens, you have to look the part and say you are an active citizen. Do you pay your taxes? Are you one who is a responsible citizen wherever you are? And that is what we're talking about. Are you one who shuns corruption? and practices it? Are you one who moves and shakes in industry and commerce wherever they are? Are you one who actively contributes to the future of your local community, to the future of, of your country as it were? And that is where active citizens come into play. It need not be a JCI thing when we look at active citizenship, but it has to be something that's a part of you. An organization that offers us opportunities to lead at any level and every level. Profiles that have been read here today show you how young people, when given an opportunity to serve at local level, to serve in projects, to serve at national level, to serve at international level, they do it, they give their all, and they excel to the best of their abilities. Therein lies the opportunity that we have in this organization, an organization that is over 100 years old. And every year we keep providing those development opportunities that empower us as young people to be the movers of and shakers of industry and commerce, to be the movers and shakers in communities, to lead in civic government, to lead in, to lead in national government, to even lead in, in chambers of commerce wherever we are. And in this platform, this is where we find such young people who are able to do all those things. And JCI provides that opportunity for us to be active citizens wherever we are. When you look at my profile, I served at every level of the organization. I always took it and say to myself, Itai, any opportunity to serve, do it to the best of your ability. Yes, you might have aspirations because everyone would really love an opportunity to serve at the highest level possible when given the opportunity. But at any given point in time, focus on the task at hand. If you are a local president, serve to the best of your ability. If you are a project chair, serve to the best of your ability and with distinction, and the rest will come post that. And I would like to call upon anyone and everyone who's connected today to say at any level, serve with dignity, serve with honor, with a title or without a title. And in anything and everything that you do in this organization, let it be something that whenever you are serving, you're asking yourself, as you walk the face of this earth, what legacy are you leaving for your children? I believe in this world, we, 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 we enjoy a lot of things on the continent, we enjoy a lot of freedom because we've got young people that gave up their, their comfort zones and they went to war for, for them to get us an independence. We have people that have planted trees, the infrastructure that we enjoy. It's because of sacrifices of people that have gone before us. But the million dollar question that needs to, that, that needs to keep ringing in our head is to say, what is it that we're doing today? What seeds are we planting today so that our children can be able to enjoy the fruits of our hands. I encourage everyone, wherever you are, to keep taking action and make things happen. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, President Itai, for your opening uh, speech. And I will uh, quickly move into the question and answer part because we only have around 50 minutes left and there are a lot of questions. Um, my first question would be to all my fellow, uh, to all my presidents who are uh, 
present with us today. How was JCI and being an active citizen, uh, how, how did JCI and being an active citizen improve your personal or professional life outside of JCI? And please try to limit your response to one minute so we can take as many questions as possible. And I would like to start with President Monsif. If you please can mute yourself because we cannot hear you. Unmute yourself. Hello. Hello, yes, we can hear you now. Okay, um, I think um, GCI organization is all about this uh, question, you know, it answers the question. Uh, uh, once we decide to join this organization, we are already prepared for being active leader in the changing that we are looking for. If we don't make a difference, then we don't uh, really uh, mean anything. So uh, difference for yourself and for the others. When you join the organization and after one year, two years, etc., you are, you know, uh, changing yourself in the better way. Same thing for the, your environment, the human environment and natural environment and social environment. This is uh, my, my, my answer to the question. Thank you very much. Uh, President Arno, would you like to weigh in on how has JCI benefited you on a professional and personal level outside of the organization? Well, uh, wherever I have been, in my office, at home, everywhere, you can see a picture of our creed. When I wake up, I look at it. It's like a prayer. And when uh, we've been all president here, we recite it maybe four, five, seven times in a day in different languages. And for me, the creed today in this pandemic, COVID, post-COVID, new normal, whatever you call it, has a very utmost importance. In fact, it is being threatened. And we active citizens, if we sit down and we don't do anything about the creed that we believe, then it's useless. Why? Faith in God. You've seen how people have been close to God these past uh, weeks, months. Brotherhood of men. We don't have any more. We are in nationalism. You know, you can see in US, elsewhere, Brazil or wherever, UK. People, nations are not opening, but are closing themselves. Economic justice. Government are taking this opportunity to put laws that oppress people more, that harm human personality, which is in our kid. Government should be of laws rather than of men. Are they not taking advantage of being putting laws that threaten all the human personality, the human uh, aspect of life? You can see also about the notion of service to humanity, how important it is today. It's at the center. Everybody's talking about solidarity, about helping the neighbor, about helping other communities. And for me, in my life, since I've been a JC and up to now, the creed is it's at the center of everything. And I hope that JCs, they don't recite it as a parrot, but they leave the creed as active citizen. Thank you very much, President Arnaud. And now I refer the same question to President Erlon. Thank you very much, VP Mohamed. I think I would say uh, three main uh, benefits for me. 
The first one is the capacity building, the, the level of self-confidence and the training. So I, I, I'm so grateful to JCI. I mean, building my capacity. Uh, number two uh, is the, the, the element of the network worldwide. I mean, uh, it has been a huge benefit for me. And number three is it has helped me to really give a meaning and purpose to my own life in terms of social responsibility. Now, for those who are following my activity on social media, they will see it. More than 60% of my business, I mean, being busy on social media is not paid. It's not for profit. I mean, if you look at my activity, the, whole, the roadmap, last year, we, 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 we reached, I reached personally, I trained more than 10,000 people in presence, not on social media, we can count. But my staff were laughing. Out of these 10,000, just 2,000 or 3,000 are paid. 7,000 are totally free. So for me, those are the, what JCI has brought to me, more uh, in terms of social responsibility and individual social responsibility. And I'm so grateful. And it, it, it is a clear indication that there is always a pleasure to give than to receive. But in giving, you always receive. Thank you very much. Uh, and now I would like to refer to pres uh, President Pascal. Thank you very much. Um, first, I want to say that in 1999, two years after I joined JCI as a student, uh, JCI woke my consciousness to the fact that I do not live for myself, but I must live for others. And in the town where I come from, there was a 13 year old controversy that has torn the town apart. So I mobilized 32 university students to work hands in hand with some very important people in my hometown to solve a 13 year problem. It was, it was so difficult, but that was a contribution. And I have continued to do similar things um, since then till this moment. But professionally, I, I want to say that when I joined JCI on January 11, 1997, one month after I was invited to a birthday party and I was asked to be MC. And I said, no, I couldn't do it. And I was pushed, you know, and said, look, you must be the MC. I struggled with it. But you know, from February, 1997, when I could not speak to six months later, I started making money from being MC. That is a part of JCI. But what I have gone to do since then is that I have been able to transfer, just like uh, President Roland said, this experiences and this knowledge in building young people both within and outside JCI. And the network, that GCI has helped us create today, even a business is something that we cannot quantify, we cannot buy with money. And therefore the businesses that I run, yes, these businesses also tend to make profit, but we also look at how we can contribute to our community because we've been told consistently that we must be in line with the global compact of the United Nations, which GCI has subscribed to for many years. And therefore, what that has helped me do is to understand how to run ethical businesses, to run businesses that do not only benefit you, benefit all the people, benefit community, and where you can bring in young people who pay nothing to prepare them for their future endeavors. And this is one thing that I'm very passionate about. And even though that every year now I go to Japan to conduct the JCI Academy, I do that with every sense of passion, every sense of commitment and happiness, because each time you give, you receive and each time you create one great life something great happens in the community and therefore we need to continue to turn out great leaders and having the opportunity to have served gci the five of us here and it is still serving what it means is we have been given a great opportunity and we have no reason not to give back to the community and that we must continue to do thank you thank you very much president pascal and president itai would you like to elaborate on this question Okay, thank you very much, uh, 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 VP Mo, for that question. The biggest takeaway for me uh, in JCI has been self-discovery. JCI unpacks the diamond in you. JCI unpacks uh, something inside of you that you never imagined. And many a time, you, 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 you come across mentors that you never had. You get opportunities that you never had. You get into this large network and you just have called them free consultants as they as, as, as you'd like to, if you want to call them that. And as you walk through that journey at any level, as you serve in the organization, you've got people that you work with on that journey. 
in service and the person you become is one that probably you would never have imagined. That's the biggest takeaway from me from this organization. And I'll keep serving in this organization as long as I've got, uh, if my, as long as my heart keeps beating, uh, because I believe we can still continue to mentor more young people to rise up and serve in this organization and serve their communities wherever they are. Thank you very much, President Itai. And, and now I, I come to something that President Arnaud touched upon, which is what is currently happening in the world? In you, what is your view on what JCI's role should be in combating the coronavirus pandemic during months? JCI's uh -huh. role. <clears throat> I'm not. I'm not listening to you. It's gone. It's, no, no. Uh, sound came back to me now. I didn't hear the question. Excuse me. Okay. So the question is: What is JCI role in combating the coronavirus pandemic? Well, um, as I am not, uh, you know, active and uh, within, you know, the JCI organization now, but uh, I joined their meetings, I joined their, you know, uh, general assemblies, and sometimes I'm invited to their uh, local uh, actions and activities. And I can uh, confirm that uh, in our country, Tunisia, all JCI members in all the country they have been very active and serving to the most the, uh, the, the, the fight against this, uh, uh, this, this healthy problem. Uh, they have been volunteers, they have been helping the government, they have been helping families. Uh, I am really proud of them. And uh, I, I was a little bit ashamed not to be a part of their uh, groups and teams working on the field. So really, I'm proud of them. They have done a very good job. And I think this is uh, maybe a bad occasion, but a good, good project, good uh, uh, action, which came to them. And they have demonstrated that uh, as JCI members, they are partners. Thank you very much. President Arnaud, would you like to tackle this question? Uh, yes, uh, uh, we can see JCI with the COVID really inventing itself in this process of looking of new ways and means of doing things. Uh, I think uh, we should not tend to lean on ourselves, but open up. We've got a very rich network of members. Uh, we have uh, contacts worldwide. We are a young organization, and I believe that uh, what uh, is being done actually should be intensified and continued and uh, educate the population. It's not only on the COVID, but uh, also on uh, les retombées, on, on, on the impact of the COVID especially in terms of economy, in terms of poverty, in terms of food, and all these uh, aspects that are becoming very pressing. Uh, this is where I believe with our network of young active citizens, we can help and contribute in our modest manner. Thank you very much. President Pascal, uh, President Roland. Are you with us? President Roland, do you would like to tackle this question? How can JCI uh, assist in combating the COVID-19 pandemic? 
my, my internet is not really stable. I try to use double network, orange, then <laughs> MTA is just crazy. That's what, welcome to Africa and Middle East. So, okay. Uh, uh, <laughs> no, I, I think uh, I, I've been saying this, it is important and I'm happy President Ita is here. It is important to have a, a, a serious brainstorming session where we need to look, how do we reinvent ourselves? Uh, how do we really do it? And uh, I don't think the past world president that we are, we really have a solution because it's a matter of generation. Each generation needs to identify, uh, but what we stay, what you can touch is the values. You know, President, I know just told you about the creed that every morning he look at it and it's a source of inspiration. And our values are relevant today than even yesterday. Our mission also, but what we have to change are our tools. So I would really strongly invite you to, 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 to engage the whole organization, all the stakeholders in this conversation to see how do we do things? How are we going to run our conferences? How do we run our general assemblies? How, how? We need to question. I mean, just question and come out. It will be amazing what we have called a, a perspective approach in terms of management and also the collective intelligence. And I'm sure that in this process, you guys will come out with some new tools that is going to help the new JCI. But the values, the principles, are the foundation you cannot touch but have what you have to touch now are the finishing the feelings and all the rest that's what i can really say the solution lies in your hand but things will not be like before i want it to be very clear to each and every one of us okay thank you very much president pascal thank you very much uh, what can jc i do to help um, curb COVID-19. Of course, I see a lot of JCI local and national decisions taking some action. And right now there is no cure and there is no vaccine. So the best every and any organization can do is going to create awareness, okay? On what the practice is. That's what I call personal protective practices. And JCI members have been creating awareness. I've seen some videos go online. I've seen some section go online and all of that. And so we need to do more and more of that. That's very important. But also, do not forget that every society stands on a tripod, the business, the government, and the civil society. And sometimes it looks like the government becomes um, handicapped in terms of ideas. It looks like the businesses want to focus on how to rescue their businesses. JCS, a non-for-profit, will have to fill the gap to continue to engage government and businesses so they can see how they will support people who are suffering from this COVID-19. That's on one part. The other thing that I want to talk about is that as an organization, we must also, and, and as I see a bit of that happening, but we need to do more. Do not forget that there are JCM members who run businesses. There's like what I call business protective practices. So we have personal protective practices. I've termed this business protective practices. So when we have online sections, we also find the best way to continue to encourage our members to understand that the COVID-19 will go away. Of course, there will be new normal. But the business is how do you continue to ensure that the economy continues to strive? How do you continue to see that your businesses do not go under and all of that? That's another area that we need to focus on to see how we can create forum, bring experts within and outside JCI to continue to um, teach our members and share experiences how they can you know, weather the storm and go through this process. And if we can continue to do those two, then I'm sure by the time we have a vaccine and we have a cure, we'll still have some humans on earth who can have those vaccines and take the medication because right now, the only thing that we can do is going to create awareness on how to stay alive until a vaccine or a cure is found. Thank you. Thank you very much. And President Itai. Thank you very much uh, uh, for that question. And thank you to the presidents for the, the responses that are so much on point. Uh, I could almost just say, just as the past presidents have said, uh, so shall we do uh, uh, their recommendations. Uh, my, take, my take on it is number one, I just would like as your president to congratulate the work that the members have been doing. They have not sat on the members across the world, have not sat on their laurels and say we're in a crisis, so we'll not take action. But they realize that in the midst of crisis, that's when champions are born and they stepped out and they're taking action and they're engaging. We're here today because we're learning from technology and making things possible. And yesterday we were in a virtual conference in Dublin and today we're now sitting in 
Africa, making things happen. And th therein lies the solutions that we have for us to ensure that we continue being relevant and resilient into the future. But most importantly, just as uh, 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 President Pascal spoke about, we need to look at our members and look, look to ourselves as members for solutions and say, how best can we at an individual level, at professional level, at, 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 at business level, be resilient enough to ensure that post the crisis, we stay alive. What is it that we're going to do in terms of upskilling up ourselves so we can be relevant in the job market? How can we make sure that we put in place uh, 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 measures that ensure that post the crisis, our business enterprises can rise up again? Our business models can be relevant in the new normal. And therein lies impacting the members at an individual level, which in turn then gives them the opportunity to even then be more for the community that's, that's around them. So I believe we've got the answers as young people. Let's stay engaged. We've got the platforms to have those conversations. And let's utilize those platforms for, con for constructive uh, conversations that can ensure that post this crisis, we can be victorious and we can continue to be relevant wherever we are as young active citizens. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I do now have one of the submitted questions. I would like to ask it to President Itai and if any of the other presidents would like to um, would like to weigh in on this uh, question. So um, we do have a lot of amazing female leaders from, from Africa and the Middle East, two of which president of JCI Nigeria, president of JCI Mauritius, and presidents from uh, all over, from JCI South Africa to JCI Morocco. And I also come from a national organization, uh, the same amount of female national presidents as male national presidents in our history in JCI Lebanon. So the question says, all five presidents are male. Would you say it's a man's world? And how can female leaders from our area be able to reach the, uh, the position of uh, world president of JCI? Okay, thank you very much for that question. Number one, the world is not male. Uh, opportunities in the organization are there for anyone to rise to the best of their ability to, be, to reach the apex of the organization. Uh, you spoke about how the two the hostesses of this event are female. So they're telling you that the world, anyone, as long as you're a leader, you've got the power to make things happen wherever you are, despite your gender. When I was engaging President Franchette and she told me, oh, we're having this, this forum and we're showcasing uh, 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 past uh, uh, presidents and current presidents from, from the continent, I said, wow, that's a, that, that's, a, that's a good thing. And I said, have you thought about having a forum where you showcase the finest women that have risen to lead this area over time? And I can count EVPs. That's, we've got one that's here today. We've got, we've got, we've got Aruna, we've got um, uh, uh, EVP Joko, we've got Rania, we've got so many past EVPs that have come through this organization. We've got even past vice presidents. So it shows the women in the organization to say opportunities to serve at the highest level are there. 2017 JCI president, uh, John Hetzel is from the USA. 2013 was from, 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 from Italy. Opportunities to serve are there. Let not anyone shut you down because, because like what president uh, uh, Monsef spoke about how people try to shut him down and try to show him why he could not uh, uh, be president, but he kept on asking, why not? So keep asking yourselves, why not? And I believe the best is yet to come. You can do it. Go ahead and take that mental. And certainly I believe more exciting things are coming off the continent and beyond where we see women rising up uh, to serve at JCI board and beyond. So it's up to you to make it happen. Thank you very much. And hopefully we'll be able to see a female leader from Africa and the Middle East uh, representing the JCI organization across the world very soon. Uh, now, my next question I would like to address to President Pascal. 
uh, how can JCI adapt to the vastly accelerating technological advances in the world? So can, can you repeat the question again? So how can JCI adapt or keep up to the vastly accelerating technological advances in the world? Thank, thank you very much for the question. Um, first, I think the COVID-19 has presented a wonderful opportunity to make this happen. And so if some of us were sleeping before and were struggling and um, didn't think, you know, advancing our skills and knowledge and understanding in terms of technological tools were not necessary, now we have seen the necessity of making this happen. So my response, the rest response to that is that from local to national to international, this is a time for GCI to invest. I use the word invest very carefully. And the investment is not just in terms of the money that we put in, but exposing our members there are a number of free trainings globally, online, you know, virtually. So we must identify these opportunities, okay? And then ensure that our local secretary generals and those who work as secretary, our national secretary general and those who work as a national secretary and of course the JSA headquarters, all have access to these tools free. And where we need to spend money, it is important. There's nothing you invest today in technology that is a waste. We need to invest in ensuring that people have what I call hands-on to be able to pioneer organization to the next level, whether we would like it or not. The, the trajectory is gonna change. The way businesses are done will change. The way nonprofits run will change. And COVID-19, even to invest in technology to ensure that wherever we are, or whatever circumstance we find ourselves, that GCI can compete with any other organization around the world. So first, is to identify what the gaps are and invest in this to ensure that members can continually serve, not just as officers, not just as um, employee, but also the nonprofit and the volunteer members will be able to provide services where needed and when needed. So investment in technology is very important, but there are a lot of free tools today that I think JCI from local to national should identify and present such opportunity to our members to be able to up their skills. Thank you very much for the answer. Uh, my next question is addressed to President Roland. So we might have uh, some uh, potential members who are watching us today. My question is why would they, or why would the youth invest their time in JCI when they can join other membership-based organizations? What do you think makes us different? Good, thanks. Thank you so much. I think uh, the uniqueness of uh, our organization is based on uh, the variety of opportunities that uh, this organization gives to young persons. Uh, our uh, value, I mean, the creed is just amazing. It speaks to, to all of us. I mean, your race, your ethnicity, uh, your religion. I mean, you will see that you find yourself. So first I will say the values and principles. Second is the mission of the organization is so relevant, offering to this target population development opportunities that will help them to better to be better citizens, but most importantly, to be true change agents. And last but not the least, our network, we are in a global organization, but with a local color. So I think uh, yeah, we have thousand reasons, uh, young people have thousand reasons to be part of JCI. When I was JCI president, I would keep insisting in two. So that you instill to a part of our mission. The first one is what we offer to the young person. So we shouldn't only tell them what they will come and benefit, which is dangerous. I mean, in terms of sales, we have not said the truth. We should be truthful when we are selling the organization. It's about offering you, but it's also about you contributing. So you have two parts. Offering you the opportunity, we we'll give them the opportunity so that at the end, you are true agent, you are active citizen. We have understood from the conversation since more than almost two hours, that active citizenship is about being involved. It's about identifying a, 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 a challenge and bring a solution. It's about, it's a whole lifestyle. So I think, again, young people need to be part of this organization because it will offer them empowerment opportunities that will help them to be true change agents and to be solutions providers.
Thank you very much. Uh, now my next question is for President Arnold. What do you think uh, the key issues that Africa and the Middle East uh, that Africa and the Middle East needs to address in the coming decade? So the most important key issues that the world is facing or Africa and the Middle East is facing that we need to address in the coming decade. And please unmute yourself because we cannot hear you. Sorry, I didn't catch the last part of your question. So my the question is, part. yeah, it's the same question. So what do you think the key issues uh, that Africa and the Middle East needs to address in the coming decade? Well, uh, for me, uh, the reason I remember joining the organization was that it was proactive. It was in advance of other similar organizations being always in that proactive mood. It was therefore in advance of its time, for example, providing training that others didn't provide, organization of uh, the same uh, target audience, that is the youth. And third was that it had tools that help young people to become leaders. In fact, if you see my generation of JCs, today, my friends all over the world, they have become leaders, whether in their business community, whether they are involved in politics or in other areas. So uh, in Africa, we have a role to play for the youth, for our target audience. And we need, therefore, to be proactive, to be in advance of time, and to provide the tools. And there are problems that are going to come up very quickly, which we are seeing. And They've got a variety, whether economic, whether social, whether health. And this is where I believe JCI should step in. Did we lose President Arnaud? I think he's done with his answers. Oh, okay. Thank you. It might be my connection. Thank you very much, President Arno. And now my final question is uh, addressed to President Munsef. President, you were uh, world president in 1986, and you've been in this organization since the 70s. How do you see um, the uh, how do you see JCI has changed throughout these three decades since you were world president? Uh, well, uh, the change is um, is there, and uh, this is a part of the uh, the natural uh, law uh, of uh, the evolution and the life for a person or an organization. So any, any organization that does not change, uh, this is like a dead organization. So change has, uh, has been uh, realized. Uh, the only concern I have is just the, the membership number of the international JCI community which has been declining since then. I remember when uh, uh, I was a member of the International Board of Directors and the Executive Committee and then President of JCI, our objective was to reach half a million members in the world. And in my term, 
uh, during my term, we reached 480,000 members all over the world. Um, later on, uh, I, I was watching a little bit, you know, with the, the concern why the membership is declining. And this is a big concern. Your weight, your existence, your uh, force resides in your volume, your weight, and uh, your membership. And this is uh, another concern that I have, why people are not joining our organization, the young people mainly, and why members of our organization, they are leaving. So um, this is my only concern. If I compare my time to uh, what is uh, happening later until now, uh, this is my major concern, as I said, and I think the, uh, the leadership of GCI on the local, national, and international level, they are aware of this, and they do the best of their efforts to overcome this difficulty. I wish them all the best, and really, uh, as we say in French, bon courage. Merci. Thank you very much, President Monsef, and hopefully we will be able to rebound back to half a million members in the coming decade with uh, recruitment and membership strategies that uh, will fit with the changing world and the changing um, mentalities of today's youth. Uh, now I would like to move to the closing remarks of President Itai as we are nearing the end of the session and we don't want to go over time. So uh, President, I would like you to please um, address on how, how we can uh, bridge the gap uh, between uh, active citizenship as a lifestyle, between the um, traditional or uh, traditional way of thinking and the modern way of thinking of being uh, an active citizen, something that is relevant to the, today's youth. Thank you very much, uh, VP Moore. Uh, before I give my closing remarks, just to thank the, uh, the, the panelists here today, the past presidents, and the nuggets of wisdom that you've given us. Uh, and to congratulate the, the, the hostesses of this organ, of the, the, key, the organizers of this event, JCI Nigeria and JCI Mauritius. Uh, in line with your question, when we look at those two things that we've been able to accomplish today, number one, bridging the gap between Mauritius and Nigeria, uh, in as much as we've got oceans in between. Uh, when we look at how you've been able to get past presidents, past knowledge, but which with, with, with knowledge that is uh, 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 relevant today and beyond and putting them at the same table and interfacing with them, that is bridging the gap. That is bridging the, info, the, the, the knowledge gap. That has been created over time. I've always, I often ask myself, besides coming to conferences and Congress as past presidents and perhaps get a chance to sit in nominations committee uh, and probably uh, not get a chance to sit there, how best can we be utilized? How, how best can past presidents be utilized? And you are showing us the way that indeed they can be engaged now because of the crisis. I just hope that in the future, this trend will continue. But I also call upon all of you members to say, look around yourselves in your local organizations. Look at that board member, look at that past local president, look at that national officer and ask yourself, what inspiration can you draw from them? What knowledge can you draw from them? That is bridging the gap. We look at how this year we've been forced to connect uh, digitally uh, because of the crisis. And we've been able to see what is possible my call to all of you is to say, let us take all the rich pickings of this experience and say, how best can we redefine the way that we do things as an organization moving forward? And I believe that when we implement some of those things, there are things that are already in your DNA and are already in the way that you're doing your things. Online training sessions, online webinars, online GAs. You don't necessarily need to travel across the world 
Last night I was in Dublin. This morning I'm in Africa. In the next few moments, I'm in Dutch Caribbean. And later on this evening, I'll find myself uh, uh, in South America. That is the beauty of technology without moving an inch. And that is exactly how we can, as an organization, move and be relevant into the future. And as young people, we're looking for ways to say, how do you continuously engage? Today, we're live on Facebook. Therein lies an opportunity to open up our meetings and our events and our activities to the rest of the world. You have shown the way. And let us not necessarily cut the way that we're doing things right now post this crisis, but let us see how best we can make it better moving forward. I wish you all the best. Keep on taking action in your communities. Keep on being those of good courage. Because I believe 2020 is the year that, we, that, that we've been waiting for. The year that we find ourselves finally becoming that international organization that we've always touted ourselves to be. Because we have really gone international, because we've bridged the gap, the geographical gap, the connectivity gap, the knowledge gap. And now let us continue to share those best practices as you move on into the future. And I believe that we are spurred for greater days to come as an organization as, and as a movement. So yes, last year I said we shall be bridging the gap and I'm glad that the opportune, opportune, opportune time came in this crisis for us to continue to bridge the gap. So in 2020 and beyond, let us continue to be relevant and be that organization of choice where young people will come to ensure that they develop and impact their communities wherever they are. I thank you very much African Middle East for making this possible and I wish you a fantastic day. Please stay safe. And I look forward to seeing you very soon somewhere around the world. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, President Itai. And I look forward to see you very soon uh, around the world. Uh, and uh, thank you very much for always inspiring our members and trying despite uh, the pandemic and the special circumstances that we have to ensure that JCI is still operating and it's still running and our members are still motivated. So for that, I thank you. Now I would like to move to uh, the closing remarks of JCI Nigeria President uh, Oni. I thank you so much, VP Mohammed, for a wonderful moderated session. Um, thank you so much, our wonderful um, panelists and our very big brothers from whom we draw um, inspiration, past President Monsef, past President Arnold, past President Roland, past President Pascal, and our Bridge the Gap President Itai. Thank you so much for the wonderful session. And thank you so much everyone who has been part of this. And importantly, thank you so much, Pres President Frontier for the collaboration that we've been enjoying. And uh, we've had so much fun here. There has been so much to learn. So thank you so much. And I ask that we look forward to the next um, series that we'll be organizing, JCI Nigeria and JCI Mauritius featuring the, well, let me not give you, let me not tell you what we to expect, but you should know that you'll be expecting so much. <laughs> so thank you so much. Thank you very much, President. And now I leave the world to JCI Mauritius President Franchet. Thank you very much, Vipimo. Yes, Oni, you scared me. I thought you were just giving out the secret. Just let me wait for a moment. So I take the risk of repeating uh, my dear friend Oni. So I would like to thank you everyone for being here. Thank you uh, presidents for accepting because uh, one thing that is fabulous that I really appreciated is that the moment I just sent each one of you the question, there was no hesitation. I, I just got a, a prompt reply like, yes, yes. And even uh, President Monsef, but I had never met before. I'm, I'm sure he had never heard of me before, but as I sent him the message, he immediately replied positively, which is very much appreciated. So thank you very much, uh, President, for being here. You can see how I'm even more excited but than before the session because I'm fired up now to take even more action than, than before this mm -hmm. session. 
and I'm sure all the members that have been following us on Facebook are also more energized now to go back to their community and to implement what we have learned from here because uh, the aim is not just to learn to hear from our presidents but also to go back to our community and implement and also continue to impact other members. So thank you very much for these words of wisdom and everything you have been saying here is like a more motivation, more inspiration for me and I'm sure for others also to do even more than what we were doing. So thank you very much. I would like to thank also EVP Asha for being with us today. Thank you, EVP Asha, for all the support you are giving to all the national organizations from the region. Thank you to our dear members that have taken the courage to come with us today and uh, introduce our presidents. Thank you so much. You have been awesome. And I would like to thank also VP Mo for having accepted to be the moderator. And to end, I would like to thank the Nigeria team, which is a very, very crazy but very efficient team. Thank you so much, team, and thank you everyone for having followed <laughs> us, be it on Zoom or on social media. Thank you so much, people. Stay safe and see you for the next series. Thank you very much, President Franchette, and, and then my turn, I would also like to thank very much all the presidents who were with us. President uh, Munster, for me, I, I, you have never met me and I've never met you, but I can feel uh, that we learned a lot from your experience uh, today. And I, I really hope to see you very soon around the world, if you can, and if you are able to join us at our next upcoming World Congress or any event that uh, will be happening depending on the pandemic. So I would really like to, to see you and meet you physically, hopefully, and I'm sure all, all of our members from Africa and the Middle East would also like to meet their first president mm -hmm from Africa. President Arno, I met you um, this uh, last year in, in Mauritius and you, you helped us a lot during the candidates training. Uh, so your advice were very valuable and I'm really, uh, I really appreciate you being here with us. And I'm sure as well that members from all over the world and members from VCI Mauritius look up to you uh, as an inspiration to one day also become world president. Uh, president Rolam, I have also not met you, but your your experience and your um, uh, your your inspirational words that you said uh, you gave us today are also very well received and very encouraging for members from uh, Africa and the Middle East and all over the world. So I thank you very much, and I hope to see you as well very soon in the next JCI event. Uh, President Pascal, you have been very uh, you, you have been one of my mentors over the past year uh, as we as we trained to become uh, JCI board members. And uh, I met you in, in 2016 when you came to Lebanon as an official visit and you were, um, uh, you told your inspirational stories to our members in Beirut. And I still can remember the energy that you gave everyone um, uh, in Beirut to, to become uh, leaders like yourself. So thank you very much for everything that you've done for the organization. And I hope to see you uh, very soon, hopefully around the world. And last but not least, I would um, thank once again, President Itai for being here with us today. I know you have a very busy schedule with the European conference and all the things are happening all over the world. So it was our pleasure to have you among all the presidents from Africa and the Middle East. and. We are definitely proud of you and proud of what you are doing. It is unfortunate that your year has been plagued with the coronavirus, but for me, I feel that we have done so much more than what we could have done physically, uh, being at so many places at once on the same day. So thank you once again for the uh, five presidents for being here and a very, very, very big thank you to JCI Nigeria and JCI Mauritius. This panel uh, required, I'm sure, a lot of effort and a lot of meetings to set up and a lot of meetings to coordinate. So your efforts are very, very highly appreciated. And finally, thanks to all the members who were present with us today to introduce um, the presidents and for everyone who attended, for, for everyone who supported uh, EVP Asha Director Tunji, uh, SG Kevin, and everyone who has been with us today, 
thank you very much for being here and uh, have a good, a good day and the rest of the weekend. All right, thank you everyone.